Hey guys, this is Jim Fix, a.k.a. Fillmore. For those of you who love QF, a podcast about Howard Stern and would like to donate some money, there's two ways now you can do it. Uh, you can join our Patreon page, which is listed in the graphic you're seeing now. But also, if you'd rather not do a subscription-based thing, even if it's a buck a month or what have you, uh, you can use our PayPal account, which would be jimfix76 at gmail.com. Uh, and you can donate whatever you like, however you like, uh, one of those two ways, and we'd more than appreciate it if you'd like to do so. Thank you very much. I can do that. That's Raise your right hand and say, I swear on the Lord Jesus Christ I'm not fucking Robin. Well, say I swear on the Lord Jesus Christ I'm not fucking Robin. Okay. I, I really think that uh, that was a confession that she's fucking him. <laughs> How? Well, hey, I start... That charity, Jesus, just uh, where's that in? What, hey, I'm starting a foundation? That means that she's screwing the guy? No, no, no. This has been a long time coming. Yeah, but she's mentioned him a hundred times before, so why is this the announcement? Because, okay, a charity, when you go into a charity with one person, that's almost like making a baby. Um, Robin, the 34, I think, should go up to 44 on the narcissistic chart because I can't really exactly remember what Howard said. And she goes, oh, thank God for people like that. And she was completely referring to herself. <laughs> John Hine, big wrap-up show yesterday. I heard Robin on the wrap-up show with her. Guatemala, 15 Foundation. I, you know what? I'm resenting the 15 Foundation. Why I feel, are you resenting it? I don't know. There's too much 15 Foundation on the air. Everyone's afraid of you around here, from what I can tell. Because oh, people are like, it. I go, so don't give any money. And they go, oh, no, I better give money. The bigger issue here, even beyond today, is that Robin's charity is totally taken over the office. Whether it's on air where she's slipping in charity stuff into the news, whether it's Sal and Richard, whether it's me looking up contacts, whether it's her uh, assistant that's just dropped in the middle of the office when no one knows who she is and she's in and out of Tim's office. It is. Uh, there's more charity work going on here now than radio work. <laughs> What's the big deal? <laughs> well, the big deal took up an hour on the wrap-up well, show. You know what? I said I didn't want to get into this conversation. Goodbye, Jason. Well, Jason, I don't know what to say. I, I do. I think I, I, with I, my think I don't want to have this conversation. She's upset. Okay. I want to talk to you about it. You're you know what? I, I, I just have to respectfully quit this job. Right. Because I'm just a torturer to everyone here. I'm a miserable cunt who doesn't even say good morning, apparently. And what are we supposed to be talking about? You're getting... You're, listen, he I'm wants done. more from I'm you. I'm done. You're not done. done. You wouldn't I'm leave. Yeah, and then, uh, you know, we were having a great time. It was a good evening. Yeah, and then something bad happened. I got some information happened. that really rocked me, and it just fucked my weekend. I could guess what it is, but I'm not going to. I think I probably figured it out. Really? So, uh, yeah. Somebody betray you? It felt like a betrayal, yeah. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to yet another installment of QF, a podcast about Howard Stern. I'm your host, Fillmore, a.k.a. Jim Fix, and with me once again is Sam. How you doing, Sammy? Hey, guys. So happy to uh, be back. Yes, and we're happy to have you back, of course, my dear. And um, we have left this uh, one for a while because we had too much on, on, the, on the go, and we didn't say that we weren't going to get back to it. It was just a matter of time, and life got in the way, unfortunately. But we're getting closer into the um, the <laughs> the part where Wiggy and them are starting to get fed the fuck up with Fifteen Foundation. It only took I don't know years. <laughs> I do admit, I just think about how long this saga is, and we're breaking it up. This is over years of time. She tortured them with this fucking fraud. <laughs> with charity, with charity, generic shit, shit, shit. Not Fifteen Foundation necessarily, but. It's You're like right. being invited. It's like being invited to an acquaintance's wedding and doing errands for it every week. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> nobody wants this. I just get up before we get started. Uh, get into some uh, plugs. So I want to thank everybody at, uh, who donated via PayPal, and I'll just give um, um, initials for certain surnames for people who are not on our Facebook group or. I just did. I wasn't sure who they are in real life. Cynthia C. Twice. Thank you. You donated. Francis F. Colin O. 
Reggie Bowman, Sean S., Boyce R., thank you so much. And I'm going to plug Joe White's podcast from Pillar to Post, which is on YouTube. There's a couple, I think, called by the same name, but um, his is, it's again, it's a wrestling podcast. I did an episode, and uh, he really did a good job. We had some sound issues, but I'm sure after he's edited, edited them out, you know, the way Raven and I did our um, I'm Not a Fan of Part 1, you're not going to hear him so much. And uh, we're recording some more. Next week, we got a bunch to record. And without further ado, we'll take you back into the bullshit. Yay. Number 10, Robin's Guatemala video blog. So this, uh, one sec, start at 2.46. Okay, so hey, bear with us, guys. I think my... my... Uh, yeah, because okay. that's what I was trying to tell oh. him. That's when you really do need a camera crew. Yeah, because I I couldn't be sitting there with a camera in front of my face. I was trying to interact with people. I was ready to hang myself watching. <laughs> <laughs> There's some starving Guatemalans trying to eat the foliage. <laughs> you know, it's because Robin's like in this courtyard of some horrible looking motel, and like, and she goes, <laughs> "Look at the beautiful, beautiful." beautiful. She goes, it's like all overgrown. I you know. <laughs> <laughs> He's so fed the fuck up. And listen, listen to Princess Robin. Like she really, she was probably wishing, fucking, what's his face was there videoing. Like she could take him to Guatemala Brandon with her. The boy, the boy toy. Yeah, like just like why is there nobody here videoing me? I'm special. Yeah. Look, look at Here's my lobby. Here's a question for you, though. Do you think, like, in a situation like this, they're goofing, like, Fred's going to get into it, and if he isn't already, they're goofing on her about this thing, but is she too stupid to realize they're goofing on her, or is she just happy they're talking about her at all? I kind of, I'm I'm half in thinking that she, I think she kind of likes torturing them, because she knows they hate it. I think she knows they hate it. <laughs> so you think she's she's punking them? It's kind of like every time when the conversation drifts towards Robin, you know, she doesn't like def being defensive, but mm -hmm. she does like being the center of attention. Yes. Just like we said with the Sally thing, yep. all of her, anything negative, it really doesn't matter. There's only a few times she's walked out. Yeah. <laughs> the Cleveland book signing. We, we may have to go through that one time as a video walkthrough because that is one of the funniest things ever. Oh, my God. I mean... <laughs> You were late. <laughs> Goodbye. I, <laughs> I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Where, where's she going? She exactly. She's late. <laughs> she says she's so tired. Why are you standing in your office? <laughs> I was moaning in bed. I don't know what you were looking at. The Guatemalans here in this country are doing beautiful yard work, but in their own country, they're letting everything grow wild. And, uh,. <laughs> You're very funny. And then, and then Rob's like, oh, here's some beautiful flowers. <laughs> and I'm going, I, I, on a highway, on any highway in America, I could see those flowers. <laughs> when are you up around the highway, asshole? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, from the back of the limo, or are you just staring out at the dandelions off the fucking freeway? Um, <laughs> you decide to pick some gardunis off the throughway, Howard. <laughs> Friggin'. Like like Guatemalans, you know, they I'm sure they have all the landscapers in the world that you pay for, right, Howard? Right. Because I'm sure in these poor third world countries, it's gonna look like the team that takes care of your house. And at one point you're in your video blog, you're in Antigua or in Antigua, yeah. Antigua. I loved Antigua. And then Robin says into the camera, the only thing I've seen in Antigua is my hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame him, by the way. I go, what facts are you finding out there? What, what's in the mini bar? <laughs> I'm watching this thing. I'm going berserk. I go, I'm waiting to learn something. <laughs> no, I went to a school. There. I learned something. I'm staying right here. It's an well, where else are you going, shithead? The funny thing is, I love, I used to love when he would antagonize her like this. And it I never happens too. anymore. It just never happens on any level. It's almost like he never, something something down the way where he decided, I'm not going to goof on people because that's giving them a, too much attention. I mean, he he starves Robin, Fred, anybody else in the room for attention unless it's a totally pre-planned bit. And mm -hmm. even when it's pre-planned, he cuts them off. Like, you could tell he's annoyed if it goes on too long and mm -hmm. he's not the one completely in front of the mic talking the entire time. Yeah. Talking over them. And then I also think he did kind of say a little something during the Simona Dinnerstein thing, which was, I don't even think 
nearly as close as bad as this. No. And she lost it. So I think he learned his lesson. No more. And we figure out that she lost it because um, Simona read her the riot act, not because she was upset. Like she wouldn't, she was fine with it until the next day. So we'll continue. Elementary school. And I could not, it looked like the kids were too young to be in school. They were so small, Howard, and they were second graders, but they were so malnourished, they don't grow. You know what Robin found in, oh, because I see a lot of Guatemalans in this country, they're very short. They're Maybe they're very not little. Robin in Antigua discovered that there's Bibles in the desk drawers. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this, a yeah, free Bible. It's a Guinness Bible. These people have it too good. Guinness Bible? <laughs> what? Did you get a pint of prayer? I know. <laughs> what the hell? Was she it on tap? Say, she, she meant to say Gideon's Bible. She said Guinness. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, exactly. We got we got St. Peter on tap. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> I can't even. Happy hour we're doing. We got, we got those Galilee chicken wings. <laughs> <laughs> we dip it in some. We dip it in some. Uh, what do they call the, the? What's the? Um, oh, we dip it in some frankincense sauce. <laughs> Jeez. I'm gonna eat this Bible. I don't know where. Uh, hmm. I don't know where all your video clips are. Hey, Gary, what page is that, real quick? Before I get Lisa G in here. The Robin stuff. Yeah. Abbey Road page. It's all on the right hand column in red. Yeah. yeah. Let's see. This is the one where you you need to get your earrings. <laughs> <laughs> some bird is some cockamamie. <laughs> I think at some point, and I don't know if the, it was the Howard TV version of this, or there was actually her videos that she uploaded to YouTube, or somebody did and put them up because they were complete. The, or maybe it was a Howard TV special because there was a, a Howard TV one where they're ta- they're showing this discussion. And part of the video, but I think there was another one where it was just Robin's video blog that they actually put on Howard TV, as far as I know. Um, I can't remember, but I do remember seeing stuff about this and seeing some of these clips. Mm-hmm. I also, I, I, I have to think to myself, Robin, like, you know what this show is. So if you were going on an angle to, you know, promote compassion and empathy towards this cause the last fucking place you would go is here i mean (laughs) the very last unless you want nobody to donate to this charity or take it seriously then yeah sure bring it to the howard stern show circa you know early aughts (laughs) idiots i mean bird is making noise it's Robin goes, I think it's an owl. There's no way this is an owl. Look, this is it the daytime? She can, yeah, it's the daytime. Owls don't... I know. The the, day? Don't ask what's and going listen, on. It was some strange noise. She's she's rummaging around in this mo, this motel courtyard. With, motel. It was looks, a hotel. Whatever it was. <laughs> it, it looked like the Bates Motel. <laughs> and she's, Which he knows well. Go ahead, Sam. Robin's like the bird man of Alcatraz. You fucking... She's bird watching on this fucking trip. <laughs> We're learning so much. Kids are starving and eating Guinness books. <laughs> and Robin thinks that owls are frolicking around in the daytime in Guatemala. <laughs> and completely overthrown. Like nobody's done any manicure of the, of the grounds. I don't know what you're talking about. The place and was she's beautiful. Walking around. She's trying to discover something. You hear this annoying bird. It's a bird. You can see lush vegetation. This is some kind of a courtyard with rooms all around. All of a sudden, she's Margaret Mead. <laughs> Or, you know, if you're like into the underwater stuff, she's Jacques Cousteau, Jesus Christ, <laughs> filming whatever. Well, I see here there's a, it looks like she's ragweed. <laughs> underneath, was it him? Was it him underneath a bridge near his house yeah. or something where he was filming and that was his podcast? Opie's, Opie's just like Brent. He's turning, he's turning down Twitch. Oh, yeah. And just started, you know what, guys? They came up with a new concept. I'm going to make a ton of money. I'm just going to use my iPhone and film under a bridge. 
<laughs> it's called tra- transient radio. <laughs> You're like that um, that guy who got bitten by the stingray. <laughs> Crikey. Crikey. Here's an owl. Crikey. Crikey. It's very lush. Number. What accent? How many are we on that he can't do? <laughs> just, add, just add it to the list. You're like that anthropologist, Margaret Mead. <laughs> oh, my God. You smarty pants. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> wow, I'm so shocked he knew that. <laughs> yeah. Bird. Do you hear that bird? And I guess you can hear there's a lot of birds. <laughs> I guess you can hear them chirping and there's something. Again. Great. Robin says birds and they all shut up. They, they're all, <laughs> they just blind. They were there. Silent birds. The birds were just singing. I see a weed whacker. There must be civilization nearby. <laughs> Is it any wonder that talk show of hers never got picked up? <laughs> <laughs> her observations are like they're, they're i don't know they're documentary worthy i sent uh molly miskelly i sent her a copy of one episode of the chatter i still haven't heard back if she listened to it or if she's still alive you know after listening to it because it was so horrendously overproduced and and shitty but um Again, we kind of touched on this in the last episode, how they were kind of mocking her. Um, not kind of. They totally were mocking her, this, ex, this uh, you know, ex, expose she's trying to do. But it really is just they're picking apart her being a dilettante on, in this third world country. And rightfully so. So I feel like how Marcy was brought on and kind of you know, made Howard think that he was this, you're going to be a great interviewer. We're going to rebrand you as this ins- insightful interviewer robin at some point somebody got in her ear and said you are going to be a philanthropist a wellness expert a nutritionist and vegan and we are going to market you as all of these things and it's going to go great you're going to get a talk show you're going to get a radio show you're going to you're you know sky's the limit girl Mm -hmm. and then you know she hit the ceiling pretty quick Right. It's like hitting, taking a baseball and hitting one of the bottles at the state fair and then expecting the New York Yankees going to pick you up as a relief pitcher. Um, I mean, she she was angling for yeah, she totally angling for that angle the same way Beth tried to go towards the pet thing. So okay. I was just going to say they, they all had so many chances and so many fails. Mm-hmm. Swing and miss swing and miss. Yeah, she's walking around in this place. This this place looks like the biggest dump. No, it does. It was an look at that. It, that it's an it. old monastery. It's a carrot. Oh, my pal, my, my bad. You're Sorry, like, guys. That it, ain't, that it, that it's an it. old monastery. Oh, is that what that is? It looks like a bungalow six. A bungalow six. <laughs> well, the the monks and priests didn't build yeah. Taj Mahal. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever stayed in a place like this, but I've stayed in place like a place in Arizona. Like it, it's kind of more like what Robin probably stayed in, where it's like big courtyards. It's purposefully the vines and everything are overgrown because it's that's the vibe. Yeah, and it's the style. It looks like almost. I don't know, like Greek ruins or Spanish ruins or something. Mm-hmm. And there's like a lot of broken tile and yeah. kind of, it's a, it's part of the charm, you idiot. Yeah. Not it's everything to a... has to look like girls town. Have you seen <laughs> your house? It is the techiest shit ever. Yeah, it's a motif. It's supposed to be like just so. And uh, but unless it looks like the yeah, you're at the Barbie fucking mansion, then it doesn't look normal to him. I know I have a bunch of plastic houses, doll houses behind me, and they are better decorated than that fucking McMansion in the Hamptons. Yeah. Nuts. It's an owl that makes this incredible whooping sound. Well, those are the people of Guatemala <laughs> crying to get the fuck out of that country. <laughs> I do. When Howard is a casual asshole, it is sometimes really funny. <laughs> but I also have to say, I kind of wish Robin was on the set of Jurassic Park and a fucking pterodactyl just fucking ripped her arm off. <laughs> you know that those. scene where in the kitchen they're in the kitchen crouching down by the oven. <laughs> I have not seen it in so long; I can barely remember. But my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you hear that? Don't know what that is. 
Oh, and helpful. The other thing with Robin's blog. She doesn't it's know what anything is. <laughs> I couldn't <laughs> I see though. I can only. Is this the clip where Robin reads Spanish? No. I was way into the blog. <laughs> I couldn't put it down. <laughs> then there's another blog where Robin discovers her juicy sandals. <laughs> Dorothy, you're not in Kansas anymore. Habitacion. Habitaciones. Oh, <laughs> oh my God, she's Judy. <laughs> it's worse. She is Judy. She might mm -hmm. as well have a glass of scotch clanking around, screaming into a tape recorder. <laughs> Sit loft. <laughs> That'll never not be funny. <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna reach through and get a hold of you, <laughs> teach you a lesson. This is these birds. Birds. These birds. They're just flying around. I don't even know what they are. Do you think? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think she's about a knee deep in wine right now? I think so. Okay. <laughs> Drunk Beth may make an appearance if she ever shows up in this in this particular episode. <laughs> Robin found a sign in Spanish. And you were you were exploring awesome. nonsense. Well, this was my first day there. I oh. had no idea what the trip was going to be like. It was Ronald a lot of First day there, and she decides I'm going to video blog. What the fuck happens on the first day anywhere? You're getting settled in. You get your shit together. You put it away, your stuff. You shower up. You clean You clean yourself. And then what is there to fucking film or record? I put my own clothes away. <laughs> <laughs> What's the equivalent? It's not Diary of a Wimpy Kid. It's <laughs> Diary of a Chuddubby Kid. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. There's nothing happening. No. Foster, there's a lot of nonsense going on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now I'm thinking, okay, now we're finally going to learn something. She's like, I got to show you these. Watch this. See that? Those are my juicy sandals. <laughs> <laughs> Donations just skyrocketed. They're just flowing in. Yeah, you know, when she said that, it reminds me, like, if you were, you know, a middle schooler back then, when you wore a juicy tracksuit, it's a juicy on the butt, and you went on a school trip, and you're like, oh, my God, guys, we're in Anguilla, and look at my juicy tracksuit, woo! Yeah. Like, <laughs> but except for you're supposed to be on an educational charity trip, Robin. Look at my, my juicy sandals. Fact finding, yeah, exactly. This. Uh, now I want to show you something. I go, okay, listen, this is a different culture. And I want to show you my squishy panties. <laughs> look, there's Robin's uh, dizzy sandal. Uh, look for this on our TV. You'll actually feel like you're right there with Robin. Over that wall, people are starving. But look at my juicy sandal. I sandals. did all of them. <laughs> yes. Fred, thank you. Thank you for saying what we were going to. That's exactly right. These kids are eating Guinness Bibles and Robin's like, look at my designer sandals. Yay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On that first day, because I didn't know what kind of trip it was going to be. And okay. I thought I'd have some fun with it. Oh, good, Robin. <laughs> then, uh, Robin is talking about the big event with, uh, you know, she's going to be there with the U.S. ambassador. And you watch her block. She missed the whole goddamn event. Right. I couldn't get there. I was in the air. <laughs> Oh. Oh. This sounds vaguely, vaguely familiar. Wait, was this with the UN? Yeah, yeah. What is wrong with the UN? They had Hillary Baldwin <laughs> as a fucking wellness expert and on a climate change thing, which, by the way, what? And exactly. then they're having... <laughs> I mean, what? Are you running out of experts? <laughs> I suppose so, because now we have this lunatic who missed it. She missed it, Fillmore. The other thing is she said, I just, I just, I, I realized we went past it, but she goes, I was, that was my first day there. I was just trying to have some fun. Isn't it sound like a lot like Bowie who has to be entertained wherever he is? Like she couldn't just go and be all business. She had to go and fuck around. Like she had to go and just... Well, like I got what well, I got time to kill. Let me just film shit. It it, it really does trivialize her message and yes. the point of this. It trivializes it so badly because her narcissism won't allow her to focus on 
what the mission is supposed to be about. So now we have to learn about birds she doesn't understand mm -hmm. and sandals. Yeah, and we gotta have all... fun, and you right, gotta entertain like... me. Right. She also should be angry that they're mocking this because it's meant to go towards or bringing it up. Even she should just say, look, I'm doing the 15 foundation. I, I don't mind. I like bringing it up, but I don't want you guys mocking the effort I'm making, which is no effort. But, you know, she, I think, inherently realizes it's it's mockable, but she doesn't think she's not smart enough to know this is going to make my whole charity thing look like shit. Which which then it goes back to. How serious was this for her? Does she understand by not taking it seriously? It is also um, paralleling, kind of ruining your whole goal for your career. By mm -hmm. you not taking this seriously, you are actually sabotaging the brand you're trying to build. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not <laughs> it's the reason why we now call her 80 and he's 79 because she, she may be smarter than him, but that's not saying much. Boy, for two days. <laughs> Boo. Found out I missed a lot of really good things yesterday. <laughs> I couldn't believe what was going on in this Guatemala. I was busy listening to the owl. Yeah, you're so busy with those owls. No, I was busy in the airport with this crazy storm. I couldn't get out of New York. Those owls hypnotized me, I tell you. <laughs> Um, and so it's the storm's fault. <laughs> I really want to know the date she left that trip. I have to check what the weather was like because sure. now I, I almost after that whole Cleveland book signing thing where she said she left a half an hour before her flight. I mean, of course, it's pre 9 11, but still, right. that's and it's domestic. Really, I mean, you're really pushing it. You're really oh, yeah. fucking pushing it. You know, you're pushing it. There's no excuse. I almost don't believe her. Well, it's it's no different than him and that Prince story about how Prince played in total darkness. Meanwhile, there's pictures out there. It was like, you know, quarter light, quarter house lights on and had proven to be total <laughs> bullshit. All you have to do is yeah. just look for a picture. <laughs> there's landmines and dynamite being thrown at a Led Zeppelin concert. I think <laughs> had so. to leave. Mortar fire. Including a reception at the U.S. ambassador's home. So can't be made up and we're leaving antigua today and we're in, or antigua today yeah, i don't know the difference either <laughs> which is a really historical and wonderful city and beautiful and we won't be coming back so all <laughs> that sounds like a recommendation if i ever heard one <laughs> so guys what did you learn anybody <laughs> listeners you guys this is a, you feel this informed is... <laughs> This isn't exactly Michael Palin looking to start traveling around the world. ...of Antigua and its beauty is this hotel. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I learned. Well, I'm with you. I would have stayed right in that hotel. No, Antigua was lovely. We did go back for lovely. an afternoon. I think Guatemala, big things happened. Robin turned down a meat dinner. What? Right? More recently, didn't she... Um, God, when was it? It might have been in the last week. I think uh, Raven clipped it. Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry. Bless you. It's a, a nasal passage getting in the way, guys. I don't believe, I think Raven clipped something along the lines of her saying that she ate meat throughout this time. Like she said she was a vegan, but she wasn't. She was actually eating meat. I didn't, because he, I didn't catch that. I'm, I got I seem to recall something like this because he was told by his doctor recently that he needed to eat more meat. Cause I he did was, catch you know, that part. Yeah. And it's something along the lines of like, she, I don't know during that, maybe it was this or during the book tour. I'll have to look, I'll have to re research that guy. Sorry to be so vague about that. Um, can, I, can I ask you, what's the difference between this and like the show Paradise? Where <laughs> nothing, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Both <laughs> lasted about as long. <laughs> oh my god! Didn't you turn down some meat or something? Like, cause you're vegan. Of course, I turned down yeah. all meat. All right, this should be interesting. We're going down to a house where a meal has been prepared for us. A meal has been prepared <laughs> <laughs> by some of the Mayan women. I beg, can you imagine? <laughs> I hope they wore gloves. Good Lord. I'm telling you, worms are going to grow out of your head. If you open your mouth tomorrow, snakes come popping out. You won't be surprised. No. I'll just be like, okay. Oh, look at this. And by the way, you got to look at the... 
Okay, so again, Wiggy doing that elitist bullshit, you know, like yeah, he's a real yeah. Anthony Bourdain. I'm telling you, going with a hazmat suit to a restaurant. Okay, there's only but a half uh, half a minute on this one. The, the, Fred, look at the monitor. Look oh at the meal. <laughs> look at that meal that was prepared. Oh my god! And like you hear it, like oh, the Mayan women prepared a meal. You're thinking, okay, look, they're poor. They, 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 they hate us. us. What's that big lump of shit on that plate <laughs> <laughs> next to the rice? That is a squash that tastes very much like potato. The, no, the brown thing. That's the squash. Oh God. And what's the other weird thing? It's a carrot. No, and the thing in front of the carrot. He's got a squash. He left this thing in front of the carrot. Is that another squash yeah, or is that like a? More... <laughs> he wouldn't know anyway. D- donate. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be so, so lucrative. So it continues along. It continues along, and there's just more mockery. So we're not gonna we're not gonna go too far much further into that clip because it descends into stupidity. But yeah, did you want to did you want to say something? Yeah, like we went on this trip. It was so great. You guys, here's a bar. It's a bar. And I'm in, I'm, I'm in Angola. It's so good. Then I'm going to dance. It's going to be fun. I have some mind people prepare food for me. It's, it's, it looks good. It is. It's going to turn into E on nine o'clock, paradise. <laughs> There's so many hot guys. Are there any hot guys around? Where's the hot guys at? You want to dance? Yeah. You're so hot. You look so good. <laughs> That was a classic show. So number 11, um, it's just called Back from, uh, clip 11, Back from Guatemala. And we're going to start at 105. One sec. This is the uh, wrap-up show segment. It doesn't end up very dreamy. Carol Liefer stops by. And, of course, we need to talk about Robin's trip to Guatemala and how she chronicled everything on videotape. And we think Robin just hurt herself. (laughs) I tried to sit at this stupid (laughs) counter and I just hit my knee. You know, like right where you don't want to hit your knee. You okay? Oh. <laughs> oh, poor Robin. This is the other thing I wanted to point out, guys. Never at any one point during the show did she ever spend as much time on the wrap-up show as she was did for this two thousand this fifteen foundation era because she was desperate for fucking airtime to plug that bullshit. Well, yeah, and again, though, not understanding that you're going about it all wrong, and this isn't the place for it. Right. Like, and not knowing she that have been going on serious people's shows, she could have got on talk shows. She could have got on. I know she got on a couple, but she could have done right. other radio shows. Sirius has how many? But also they have the same amount of list. Like they, it's the listenership doesn't change from show to show. I mean, it may. I mean, the listenership, but the numbers of people connected to who have the actual gear isn't different. Like, it doesn't matter which show you go on. You're looking at who's where, where are you going to get the most reach? And it certainly isn't on Sirius. It's going to be on The View, which she did earlier, like years earlier when she was doing her her big, you know, weight loss bullshit. But then it'll be on, I don't know, uh, morning shows. Right. And you also know, like, charities that do take off, you see the networking that goes into it. So these certain group of rich people who are all friends, the charities that actually keep making more money and keep becoming they're all integral and they all support each other robin somehow didn't realize how to network no whatsoever she decided to pick up a grifter yeah that, you know and then just thought oh i know a few really super wealthy people and that should push me through to the finish line but she didn't do anything for anybody else she wasn't really no. networking no it's not networking it's just just gold digging based not gold digging what's another word just leeching off of other people's fame and the other thing is, you're right. She didn't know how, so she didn't know how to network in that sense. But also, she didn't have the sense that people would understand this guy is a fucking grifter, and they would smell it on him, and then they would go, "Okay, she's being taken." Like, look at the 100%. look at the dynamic, the age, the age gap here. She's clearly doing this. She's a single old fucking battle axe, and she's like trying to be Cougar Town with this young piece of eye candy as, as if we don't know what's going on. I don't want any part of this. Like I'll say hi to you and I'll hug you and I'll attend your thing. But you're, if you think I'm giving you my, my Rolodex, no fucking way. Yeah. It really like, I don't even like right from the get go. So say if she did everything right, just yeah. having that relationship right front and center and his name on it, cheapen mm-hmm. the entire thing. Yeah. So she had zero savvy, I guess, is what the, what the takeaway is. But either way, uh, she goes to the wrap up show to ply her fucking trade and they 
they eat it up. But sometimes she's also coming in to combat what they've been saying about her. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have that sound isolated? <laughs> Oh, my goodness. And with that, we welcome Robin Quivers to the wrap-up show. <laughs> you okay? Seriously. I'm, I'm recovering now. You banged that thing pretty hard. Yeah. What happened? I just got into this seat, and it was really high, and I tried to move in, and I banged my knee oh. right on the kneecap. Now, when you were on your trip and yes. doing all the video, did you think you were going to get such quality footage out of that? You know what? The first day, which is mostly what you heard today, I didn't know what kind of trip it was going to be. <laughs> that made me laugh. <laughs> She's always a passenger through life. She went I on this thing. Know. I didn't know. You should have had everything planned down to the minute if yeah. you were supposed to be on a fact finding mission mm -hmm. could you imagine this is your this is your you know what is it called this, this is, is your job <laughs> no well i mean yeah but this is your your what do you call it Phil uh, philanthropist doesn't have a fucking clue what she's doing so your foray into charity is i'm gonna get on a plane and whatever turn on my phone and see what happens exactly yeah and so i thought I've never done this before. Let me try to make it silly and entertaining. And, and I sort of was thinking about the the confidential uh, blogging that they do on these reality shows. Mm. So I put the camera on myself. Oh, my Lord. My silly. God. Silly and entertaining. Yeah. Poverty. Uh, girls being raped and not educated. Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, I've never seen anyone step, I've never seen anybody step in their own shit as much as Robin. And I'm going to now be a TV producer. How was my first <laughs> foray into it? Did you enjoy juicy sandals on sound? <laughs> it's like when you give an elementary school kid a video camera and just tell them shoot anything <laughs> and they can't lift it and it just goes everywhere. <laughs> I, she reminds me of that, you know, in the scene in Mean Girls where the girl's the weather reporter and she goes, hi, it's I, it's going to be. And she feels her breasts <laughs> all raining and she's standing in the rain, but she thinks her boobs can predict the water. It's going to be raining. Yeah. Well, like, well okay, no, one's, like, no one's what? better at current events than the newswoman so and, yeah you know i sort of staged the whole thing she of, made her own confession of thinking oh i have to get my earrings you know? <laughs> robin's out in this courtyard with the hotel is like, oh my juicy sandals make sure i get those on who's there. a better uh, actor robin or bubba <laughs> it's close it's close but i'll give robin the nod because she's sitting right next to me but you're happy with the way the trip went and i you know first of all i didn't know what what kind of trip it was going to be it wasn't a trip planned for me it was a what the fuck it wasn't a trip planned for me she said we have it on the previous episode guys this is <clears throat> i believe fifth installment but in the very very uh episode before this one i believe we have her saying they invited me to they can't they didn't have any trips to africa but mm -hmm. they said we got one going to south america would you like to join and it was the un she had to pay her own way which is, you know, because the UN's money can't be touched for that stuff. But, you know, she said, okay, I'll go and do it. Wouldn't you have fucking done as much research as you fucking could? We know that this was planned with her in mind because of the safety precautions. Mm -hmm. They remember they were hassling her about that. So Big she time. had to go over it with them about, you know, she had to defend herself about how it's going to be the UN and how they're going to take care of her and how they have all this stuff planned, how they're going to visit these places. And mm -hmm. so for her to say, I, I just walked in blind and it really wasn't for me. Mm -hmm. That's just a lie on its face. No other way to, there's no other way to spin this other than you're just lying. Yeah, completely. You're a so. lazy, stupid liar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I couldn't have put it better, Sam. Trip planned for some officials of the United Nations who were going down there to see Guatemala and observe some of the programs that had been put in place based on, you know, mandates they had been given from the UN Foundation. So I was just sort of tagging along. So it was whatever it was going to be. I was willing to go along with anything. Can you explain something oh, to me? Because Howard. Okay. So we should be so that you know what is confusing and why people think Robin is smart. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of the reason why people think like Alec Baldwin smart or Howard smart. Sometimes 
they Robin's tone of voice has that knowing mm-hmm. voice. She she has a knowing sense in her voice of like confidence. Well, this is what it is because I know and I said this is what it is. So you should trust the tone of my voice and not actually what's coming out of my mouth. Exactly. It's it's like um it's like a, a parlor trick. And it's very a parlor but you, trick. But anybody who listens, anybody who actually listens, can hear like instantly the bullshit flying about. And so the other problem is, of course, <laughs> I don't think they planned on real. I don't think they realized this stuff is being recorded, guys. It will be played back. And so fans would call up on the wrap up show. They, they, they clearly had heard themselves like they heard the replay and they go, oh, she did say that really retarded thing. I got to call them in tomorrow and ask them about it. She I would so, say things and forget it. Of course. I mean, I I really think. A lot of this stuff, and this was their excuse for most of their radio career is, I'm so crazy, I don't remember. I say so many things. Mm -hmm. Now, I can't remember verbatim every show that we do. I think we've done like 66 of them. But it it really, I have a sense of what I said. So Mm -hmm. if you played it back to me, I'd be like, yeah, I, I probably said something like that. I can't remember verbatim everything, but I can get I can have a sense of what I I know who I am. I'm not spinning bullshit plates in the air. Right. And even I, who am editing the shows together and putting them in, like and listening to the recording and after, you know, just trying to change the sound levels. I don't recall everything and I don't expect any more than Sam that people are going to have total recall, whatever, everything they did say. But, you know, if you said something. You know, if someone calls you on something, you're like, oh, yeah, mm -hmm, that sounds right. Yeah. If somebody was like, you know, that's Sam. She says the fuck a lot. I'd be like, (laughs) you're so right. Yeah, absolutely. And if I I, do, (laughs) Fillmore can't stop saying exactly and absolutely. Yes. Guilty. (laughs) Slap the cups on. And (laughs) I I love it. (laughs) Let's keep going. Brought up this morning and, and we went by it really quickly. This surprised me. You paid your own way on this trip? Of course. You don't. Again, it's a charitable organization. <laughs> she says again, but it's the first time she's saying something. Because you're supposed to know again. Yes. Yeah. I'm making the point the first time in this tone, so I'm right. <laughs> it's almost she really should be saying dumbass, you know, instead of again. Monkey boy. Exactly. Don't you know again? And- they don't need to be sending me anywhere. Well, that's correct. You didn't sponsor the trip. You went along right. with the trip that was already happening, correct? Right. You kind of paid your way. Yeah. Through. yeah. Right. But 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 I would I, I would have thought she acts she she fucking acts like she's Marty McFly and just decided to hitch a bumper on the skateboard on the back of a truck and see what happens. What are you fucking talking about? What are you talking about? I love I love when Sam gets angry. Angry Sam always makes for a better show. Dun, dun, dun. I can just hear the music. Even it's just it Robin on the back of a fucking skateboard blowing by life. <laughs> she, she's the one person who wouldn't mind seeing parts of herself disappear in a photograph and just make her look smaller <laughs> I'm, not a, I'm not officially a uh, part of the organization oh, or okay. anything like that i just went down i'm a, i'm still observing what they do i i you know i think that makes you extra special nice to pay your own <laughs> way to guatemala on your vacation <laughs> it, it, now it sounds like i did a lot of work since they're making it well TV you were doing what do they call that again it. they call that um you were on a fact-finding mission that's right it was exactly that <laughs> what facts do we find yes sam so i was there to observe you could see that people are poor okay wow and you don't like their food Good. well done job and there's birds that don't live in new york that live in guatemala congrats yeah, totally and they must not have a gardener at the hotel right okay and was it what you expected when you got down there i really didn't know what to expect um because i don't sure. read anything and i don't plan various <laughs> programs that they had to do with uh maternal and child health and um the midwives program they have there because out in the outlying areas where people live on farms most of the women have their deliveries at home and they're delivered by midwives they don't even ever see a doctor and they're having a high rate of maternal deaths because of it okay which is sadly a part of third world countries 
one of the problems they face. But um, how he, would Robin exactly help with that? Yeah, I'm not sure. Well, she was a nurse, remember? Um, <laughs> she could deliver a couple babies. Um, yeah, I, I this just sounds so flighty. It's almost as if she read a pamphlet on the fucking plane on the way over. And that was about it. When she knew this trip was coming, we've been talking about this for months. Why wouldn't you just, I don't know, I go on the Internet, read yeah. some fucking shit. I don't something. care. Read something. Their area that she was going to is specific. So you could it must have so, so much local culture, so many different things that you could take out. Go to a library. Who yeah. gives a fuck? Find something. <laughs> There's always a she go somewhere for a bagel and on the way trip over the library and maybe find something. Now, are you concerned? Uh, Fred and Howard talked a lot about the food you ate or didn't <laughs> eat there. Are you concerned that a disease is quickly approaching and will manifest well, itself? Uh, if you had seen those cows, <laughs> I would be concerned if I ate that meat. Really? Those were like some of the saddest looking cows I had ever seen. <laughs> they had very bad lives and then it ended tragically. Oh boy. So uh, I, I was glad. <laughs> Eater. And when they are, I guess when they offer you a meal in their home, I really that this is the kind of this is why some people hate vegetarians and vegans, because they're not all like this. But when you when they speak like this, it makes you want to just eat a Philly cheesesteak in front of them. I was thinking to myself, not even that I was thinking, oh, you're you, they had very sad lives and died. Ha ha ha. She right. doesn't know when it's not appropriate to laugh. Like you're no. not funny. That's not funny. That's sad. That's also you're painting a nice you're painting actually a really sad picture of the country, but you're mm -hmm. mocking it. So yeah, you're not only not doing your job, you're being a <laughs> condescending cunt about you're, it. Yeah. What's different between this and uh, Fred playing the Jackie laugh when there are like plane crashes reported in the news? <laughs> Nothing. Absolutely no. nothing. Zero. And then also to to just mock the entire culture and act like poor you that you mm -hmm. were exposed to this food because it's about you. The trip sure. fact finding mission that she's supposed to come back from and come to the show and report to is now it's all about Robin and her trials and tribulations. And Robin's a victim of really skinny, sad cows that she couldn't eat. And yeah. Um, poor people. Mm -hmm. You didn't mm -hmm. want to eat it. Did you feel like you were disrespecting them in some way? Be, uh, you know. Well, again, it was a surprise. We, you know, were <laughs> on the bus and we came into this area and we're trooping around. And first, we were at a school, and then we found out that, uh, you know, because most of the trip was a surprise to me, even though there was an itinerary, I didn't pay. What? What? Hold on, hold on. <laughs> let's let's go through this a little that more. Much attention. How, how long were you there? How many? <laughs> Even, even though there was an itinerary, I didn't pay much attention to it. <laughs> what? Hello, Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> just drop her in the middle of anywhere. And just, where are you? I don't know. Let's just go. Does this go west, sound like... man. <laughs> Doesn't this sound like when you wake up from a dream and you're like, you're never going to believe the dream I had last <laughs> night. I was I was dropped off in the middle of some country. I thought it was in Mexico, but it's Guatemala. And I was at a school and then I was at a Mayan home. And then, then my she's, sandals. She's this big tubby Dorothy. <laughs> yeah, she is. She fucking is. <laughs> I'll get you and your little dog too. <laughs> Here we go. Um, it was a, a supposed to be a Sunday to Sunday trip. I got there on Monday okay. night. So anyway, uh, when I got there, they said, oh, yes, and we'll be having a meal. <laughs> and I thought, <laughs> oh, 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 I don't know if there's going to be anything I can eat here. I, don't, I really thought Jackie was putting it on for years when I heard him reading like the Robin book and in, in the Robin voice. But then you hear her do the. <laughs> no. <laughs> She's so she cheery. Really is, though. She really is. End of she'd be she'd be Dorothy if Judy Garland played that character at the end of her life. Yes, 100 percent living through life constantly yeah, on the yellow brick road floating around. Yeah. Fuck what I wouldn't do for some of those poppy <laughs> poppy field <laughs> seeds <laughs> uh, to, <laughs> to get through this. There was an itinerary. I didn't pay attention. Follow the yellow brick road.
<laughs> so she must have handlers like pushing her onto the plane, get opening her passport for her. I don't know <laughs> what to do. Seat. I'm scared. <laughs> Where's click the your, seat? Click belt? your sand. Click your ruby sandals together. You'll be okay. Exactly. Thinking, I'm, I'm looking at Robin's scene and I'm going, okay. <laughs> and Anne Marie is Glinda, the, the good witch, good witch of the East, or good witch of the North. <laughs> Brendan Murphy's the wizard. Don't look at the man behind the curtain. <laughs> Wig, is the, Wig is the Tin Man, and he's actually he's the Tin Man, the cowardly lion, and the scarecrow, brainless, no heart, and cowardly. <laughs> Gary's the flying monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> the Wizard of Oz is perfect. <laughs> JT is the munchkin. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Chris Wilding's the lollipop kid. <laughs> <laughs> High pitch singing. It looks like a refrigerator around here. <laughs> and I don't see anything. It looks like a dishwasher with hot water around here. And there's fucking trees on the ground. <laughs> we were following Robin through her Facebook and Twitter posts, and I know JD and I got involved when we saw all the fast food ones. And well, no, she, she involved us. Yeah, she mentioned us. Yeah, saying JD and John Hyde would be comfortable down here. But it sounds like yeah, there's plenty for them to eat. Uh, only there's a PlayStation Three too. But it sounded like there was just fast food place after fast food place during well, one when stretch. When we were driving into Guatemala City, I actually thought this looks like Los Angeles. It was one mall after another. And one fast food hamburger joint after another. So I said, hey, we could be anywhere. Yeah. But again, I, you know, my mind is that's not USDA approved beef that they're serving. <laughs> you know, who knows what the fuck? I mean, oh, could be, no. could be it eating. wasn't approved by anyone. <laughs> oh, Lord. I hate when they get like this. You know, it's true. Like I've been, I've been to third world countries and even the fast food joints and some. In Jakarta, the KFC was a little dodgy, but. <laughs> but um, it's just like, who can, what, why? I mean, it's not like you took a vacation. You were supposed to be on a mission. Yeah. And ultimately, you bring stuff, you know, bring a couple snacks with you to keep you tied you over. I mean, anybody who, who's traveled knows this. You don't know when you're going to get to a restaurant. So you just bring stuff to tide you over. Lodges, Even if you're traveling domestically, you know this. Yeah, of course. That's just his stupidity. I guess her Captain Dennis wasn't on the plane with her. I mean, that could, that could, I mean that could, you be eating kangaroo shit. Uh, I didn't yes. eat the meat. I know. But, uh, you know, they were one day we were somewhere and somebody said something about chicken and they said, oh, no, I don't know where that chicken just came from. <laughs> <laughs> and they said it probably just came right from that room over there. OK. So many things wrong. First, I was someday I was somewhere. Mm -hmm. OK, Dorothy. <laughs> no fucking seriously i mean it's perfect yeah. doesn't have any idea just wandering around right if a chicken was made right there that's mm -hmm. better than the chemicals that are dumped in a mcdonald's chicken sandwich are oh, you kidding yeah. me they actually you know in the uk i don't know if they have mcdonald's or some sort of oh they do okay some guy from the UK, I don't know if it's his township or what or what, but he couldn't get a Big Mac. So he mm -hmm. is a chemist and he decided to recreate the Big Mac mm -hmm. on YouTube. The chemicals that went into this were mind blowing. They mm -hmm. give it gives mice cancer. Like that's how bad it is. These chemicals were disgusting and robin's thinking it's worse because an actual chicken is being made N yeah. that's probably better stupid <laughs> well my one of my aunts she lives in um Bereveza, which is northwestern greece and when we went to see her and my late uncle last time we were in greece she had a, a chicken in the back that she cut that off and served chicken that night and my wife was not squeamish about that stuff, but she didn't see it happen and neither did I. But I was like, I've been here many times. She grew up, you know, with my mother, you know, doing yeah. farm stuff, in, but in a village and there was no farm. It's just your garden, the animals that provide you with whatever unbleached eggs, you know, like everything is straight off the land. And there was no, you know, we knew <laughs> that's fine. That's perfect. It's probably better than whatever chicken you're getting. You're right. I mean, my daughter's father grows, they grow, she lives on a farm, they live on a farm and it's, you know, they don't do slaughtering and stuff, but, you know, there's 
some of the farms do have some of that going on. Like mm-hmm. it's just a part of this is just the way it is. I, yeah, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm not squeamish about that at all. Like I'd rather have a real chicken than have whatever chemical yeah. concoction McDonald's is serving me. Yeah, but you can't look at a diaper. Not at all. <laughs> I find that fascinating. I, I really think a part of me is like, did I not have another kid because I couldn't change diapers anymore? <laughs> We're using like, um, there's a scene in um, Friends. What, no, no, I guess bad analogy, but either way, um, there's a scene in Friends where Ross has to uh, massage somebody, some guy, and he doesn't know how to do it. So he's using chopsticks. He's using like a Tonka truck on the guy's back. <laughs> <laughs> that, that reminds me of the Lucy episode. I love Lucy. Okay. It was a John Wayne. So she was she went to Hollywood with Ricky and John Wayne was getting a massage. And of course, Lucy shoehorned her way on to set. So he gets naked. He's on the table. He's got a towel over him and she has to pretend to be the massage therapist for John Wayne. It's mm-hmm. fucking hilarious. She has no idea what she's doing. <laughs> she's great. Five, three minutes ago. See, that's fresh chicken. And that's what they said. This is about as fresh as you'll ever get it. Now, did this trip inspire you to do the foundation you're doing right now? Or was that, were they, were they part and parcel? Or were they no, I've separate? always, you know, I've always involved myself in charitable ventures. And the last time I did something really big was the Healing Bridges um, charity dinner that I threw. And as mentioned in the first episode, guys, you may have to go back for that one. We had a great deal of trouble collecting money and and putting that whole thing together i wonder why (laughs) harry itself didn't have a great amount of infrastructure it was really one person and she didn't have a lot of the resources it would take to collect the money so (laughs) So in other words (laughs) <laughs> poorly organized i'm detecting a little bit of a trend here I, i'm not sure sam it seems has I, slap I, I, yeah you know i would definitely bet on her to succeed in most things it sounds super organized well thought out i took the itinerary and ignored it <laughs> i can't wait till we get to the marathon <laughs> oh my god it's like mr magoo running a marathon so I decided to start the, the foundation because I like to get involved with small charities that are doing big things or have great ideas. And it's easier to do that if you're already set up and you have your own infrastructure and you have your own ability to take um, take the money in and then just <laughs> award it to somebody. So that's why I decided to set up the foundation. And- <laughs> Go ahead, Sam. Exasperated. That doesn't even begin to describe how stupid she is are you kidding me no she do you know that people can just start a gofundme and that's <laughs> all the infrastructure they need well in 2010 was gofundme even a thing i either way how hard is it catholic schools have been doing charities forever there have been you, do you know what yeah. i mean it is not that hard to take no. in i mean i think about um you know church stuff my mom helped run and things this is it's not that bad it's no. clothing drives i mean sure. come on car washes whatever there's all those are all kinds of ways to do this she she's just unwilling to admit she's unwilling to say that i want the notoriety i want to be responsible for one of these things i want my name in front of everything and i want to be able to schmooze with certain people and and use this as my north shore animal league or my whatever you know unicef but these excuses don't even make sense. You're all adults. You're in the professional world. You can mm-hmm. hire whatever infrastructure you want. I have had school trips that have had more meaning and benefit and purpose. Mm-hmm. And OK, one sec. Uh, OK, I had to scroll a little further ahead, guys, because the next three minutes aren't so good. But what's really interesting about this clip, when we go to 1010 and start playing, she's going to reference the big sister the time she was a big sister and the the girl Leah who's in her book and what she's doing now. And some actually funny story about it, but yeah, Sam. What? So since she's blaming infrastructure and all this other stuff, and she didn't know what she was doing in Guatemala and nothing was really planned. What right. is exactly Brendan Murphy's role? Has anyone Ooh. discovered that yet? No, nor, nor have they explained it, nor have they asked the question. I think they know. I mean, we talked when we had an re- interview with Richie Wilson. It, the first thing he said when he mentioned the guy's name was, oh, the grifter. 
Right. So I know we've talked about that, but honestly, you'd think from getting more into this that we would discover some sort of role he had in this other than making a lotus flower for the web page. <laughs> right. I and honestly he... have no fucking idea what he did besides get drunk at this shit and not fuck Robin. Yeah, that and plug his gear, his soul fire gear. Um, at any rate, How... we'll continue. <laughs> Good job, <laughs> Anne Marie. Yeah. All right, let's talk to Sam in D.C. Sam, you're on the wrap-up show. Hey, what's going on, guy? Hey, Sam. Hey, Robin, you sexy black lady. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, I was I was wondering because I was listening to the old shows that you guys uh, played last week, and I was wondering, uh, you know, when you say you was in that Big Sister program, mm -hmm. do you still keep in contact with the young lady that you sent off to college, and do you know what she's doing now? Yes, she lives up in Rock. Okay, so we're going to continue that, guys. Just Chester, and she has us. three kids of her own. Oh, my God, really? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, they call me Grandma, but don't tell anybody. Oh, <laughs> oh really? so, you, so, so, Robin, are you a gilf now? Hmm? You're a gilf. You're a gilf. <laughs> I guess so, in some circles. I try to keep no. that on the DL. I don't if anybody wants to recall, and if anybody actually read the book, she basically abandoned this little sister about, I don't know, seven, eight months into the process, claiming she couldn't deal with the um, the way the system was was treating her in terms of um, her. She couldn't keep her commitments. Well, she couldn't keep her commitments, but basically she was blaming and once again, blaming someone else, blaming the system for not putting her in a better home because her mother was absentee. Then if you go into the book on Amazon, a person who claims to be Leah's mother, birth mother, um, totally says that Robin bullshitted in her book. And she's saying, I was lost in the system. I was, you know, and it reads like something, someone that it it doesn't read wrong it doesn't why else would someone put that there yeah so my one of my best friends jacob he um well he's in school but he also is involved with this organization and works for people inc so his job is to go to people's houses mm -hmm. who have abilities and he helps them if they want to go to a gym and join a gym or go grocery shopping go to some sort of fun activity whatever he okay loves doing it if he didn't meet his commitments the organization would want nothing to do with him it helps with college it gets you into good recommendations for your career once you graduate if you're involved with this mm -hmm. it's a good thing if he weren't to meet his commitments of course the or if he weren't to show up or to keep changing times or to be flaky mm -hmm. as we can see how robin is the organization would say listen you're not credible. People depend on this. Parents depend on this. Mm -hmm. They don't but have she, the money right. to, to do and have a full-time caretaker. So they rely on these charitable organizations and stuff. That's right. And she, and as far as I know, the big sister, little sister program um, was supposed to be a year commitment or big brother, or what have you, same, same difference. And she didn't even make it to through the year. Then she claimed it like she, but she never really talked about, the Leah again until this time, as far as I know, someone may correct me in the comments if she did, but as far as I know, she just lost touch with her and said, fuck it. I'm going to go get a boob job. <laughs> That's how yeah, it read in the book. <laughs> the book. No, the, yeah, the book was just like, we had to part ways like <laughs> nothing. Okay. What? It was better for the both of us. Was it? Can we get a quote on that from Leah? Yeah. And I'd love to. And uh, they discuss it a little more further here. That's why I want to keep it in, guys, because it's kind of more expounding on uh, Robin and that situation, which, again, is kind of rare. And, and Yep. And all the money that she has, like, I think about what people who have, like, just middle class means do for charitable organizations and show up and are there for people who need mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. Robin has the funds to be beyond there for somebody. Sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, what the fuck? At least at this point, we were pretty sure. So yeah, it shouldn't be such a such a hassle. Don't tell anybody. I always wondered like <laughs> about like young grandmothers. You know, you know who was like one of the youngest grandmothers I ever met? Who? When I first started working for you guys at NBC, <laughs> Janie the cleaning lady was like 41. <laughs> and she was a grandmother. And she was a grandmother. <laughs> 
Holy that's true, shit. That's true. How did you react to the first time you were called grandma? Ugh, I still hate it. It's awful. I mean, I'm, I never signed on for this. Would you be happier if you were like uh, Mimi? You did. You did, you did sign on for this. You did. <laughs> you did. You were supposed to be. I mean, that's a, that's a term of endearment. That's a familial aspect. They hate people. Hate family. Well, well, yeah, but beyond that, well, she didn't sign on to be called grandma by her, no. her little sister's kids. But I mean, she, they could have nipped that in the bud if she really wanted to. It just sounds like she was too afraid to say, eh, don't call me that. Of course. Yeah. None of that. I don't want any of it. Maybe. I don't even like it when my nephew calls me aunt. <laughs> None of the above. Jim and Ryan. There's something wrong with that. I, I have. Why would you be upset with your nephew calling you aunt or uncle, as the case may be? I don't know. Howard still doesn't admit he's a grandfather. <laughs> that's completely correct. And that's funny because um, that leads into a discussion in the, the next day when she's back on the air because he brings it up. And in 2021, it's ironic when you hear it. Allie, you're on the wrap-up show. Yeah, first of all, I don't ever want to refer to Robin as a grandma anymore <laughs> on the show. <laughs> I mean, I, I just don't look at her that way. I don't think most of the audience does. Uh, but what are some of the things, Robin, you did to prevent disease going to a country like Guatemala? You know what? I had so little time to prepare. <laughs> the week before I was going uh, that weekend, I said, I better read this brochure they sent me to see what I'm supposed to do because maybe I need <laughs> shots. And it would. <laughs> <laughs> if we had the emoji and you saw Sam's reaction, guys, you'd be laughing, too. It would be the you know, the emoji where it's like a girl and there's a hand over her face. Like, yeah, oh, that would be me. <laughs> like you think it's just us saying, OK, she was ill prepared and she was just a dilettante and she was just, you know, uh, like acting charitable. She's giving you the <laughs> she's giving you the confession now. Yeah, here's the confession. If you were to say, so what did you do for this charity? I right. drank a lot of wine and tried to fuck someone. Right. Yeah. And I feel I filmed I filmed my sneakers or slippers or whatever. Yeah, my sandals. <laughs> that was it. Sandals. My bad. I've been way too late to get any shots. <laughs> I saw Robin so. the Thursday night. She threw that dinner for Howard. She said to me. She goes, I looked at this thing. If I need shots, I was screwed. <laughs> yeah. said, when, 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 I, when we went to Afghanistan, I had to go to like this special doctor to get these shots, like these crazy shots for a thousand different things. Right, yeah. But they don't, thank goodness, they don't recommend <laughs> shots for Guatemala. The one thing they have uh, a big concern about is malaria, uh, mosquito-borne malaria. Okay. And continuing, but I didn't. I was dousing myself with pest, you know, insecticides um, for the first couple of days, and nothing was biting anyone. So oh. I find insecticides. Well, maybe that's why you got cancer. I mean, <laughs> what? She means she means deet or not like not deet, but off I know or what she fuck. means. Yeah. She's just, <laughs> I just picture like you know that crop dusting that they do yeah. that makes. <laughs> That they tell you to wash your vegetables for like five minutes. Yeah, that yeah. it keeps the bugs off, but it gives you cancer at like 30. Exactly. <laughs> and at least stop wearing it. I didn't get bit once. Would you go back? Yeah, I fell in love with Guatemala. It is a beautiful, beautiful country. That's fantastic. Well, I love you and respect you, Robin. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's go to another person who loves and respects Robin. Ralph Sorella, you're on the wrap up <laughs> show. Uh, my, friend, <laughs> my buddy, my pal. <laughs> Absolutely. Robin knows I love her. <laughs> uh, but, Robin, the Boys and Girls Club of South Beach? Yeah. I mean, really? I mean, really? <laughs> now, what? That, that doesn't sound like too desperate a situation. Well, you know what? <laughs> I really <laughs> hate Ralph, but sometimes he's just bang on. He's spot on with this. <laughs> you know what, too, I just thought of is if they called Robin grandma, you know, she is not at this point, but, you know, she is an old person now. And it's so embarrassing. I'd feel more comfortable if they started referring to her in a grandmotherly sense than yeah. keep, keeping referring to her as like brown mounds and hot oh. jerk off material it's so it's so 
gross. That's the funny thing about it. People don't realize in a place like South Beach, yeah. there still is a lot of poverty and people who don't have a lot of money. And I don't need your whooping over there, J.D. I'm laughing at Ralph laughing. <laughs> yes. Ralph, Ralph, next week, she's doing, next week she's doing UNICEF for Beverly Hills. Yeah, Beverly, Beverly, no, 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 no. Beverly Hills you know what? I didn't so. realize this either until I visited the Boys and Girls Club there. But they serve the immigrant families, the children. We're going to actually take a look at those videos online and cover them in a video walkthrough, guys. Just take your, just hold, you don't have to wait on those. Yep. You know, I was thinking too, is that that area is where Epstein, like those bad areas is where he would peruse for, you know, broken homed people to get to be massage therapists or assistants and rape these, you know, kids. Is that, is that real? Is that for, for yeah. real? Oh, yeah, wow. for real. Okay, yeah, because well. he because he lived in Palm Beach and he would go to these bad areas that, you know, they do exist. I mean, mm-hmm. if you say South Beach and you think rich, but there are areas where they aren't so nice. And he would find these, you know, broken homed wow. kids and say, I'm going to get I'm going to pay for your college. I'm going to do all this shit and I'm going to rape you. Jesus, that's that's pretty sordid. Children of the immigrant families in South Beach, these are the people whose mothers and fathers work in the hotels, in the restaurants. You know, they're the people in the back end that you don't think about. And um, these children are serviced by this uh, one facility, and there's there would be no place else for them to go. They'd be latchkey kids if uh, they didn't have this Boys and Girls Club. And that? it only costs... TV. I, I grew up doing it that. Only Oh, Lord. Now he's going to go into it. God. (laughs) They they care so much. They're so don't you just get the sense of like if you're doing philanthropy, you should at Mm -hmm. least sound like, you know, what you're talking about or be invested in some sort of way. They just sound so detached and unaware. Well, it's it's yeah, they make charity work. They make it sound like work. They make it sound like it's just such a fucking bother. I mean, you're right. If you if you want to do charity, if you want to be um, uh, philanthropic, it should be natural. It should be like dandruff, like just brushing it off. Like do it, do it. Just it's just they, one of those things. Get on with it. We don't even think those people. We don't even think about in the back. Why right. wouldn't you think about them? I think about them. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're. I, I don't. I don't go to a restaurant and not think about people the way they do there's such a, uh, i go to a hotel and i don't not think about who's cleaning my room right who's who's doing whatever yeah who's with me- them <laughs> with them there's it's such, such rarefied air they're breathing they're like you don't even think of these people they're like they, you know, they make them seem like you know magical gnomes that just come in the middle of the night and do things and we don't even think about them but right. now i'm shining a spotlight not to sound all egalitarian and stuff, but I mean, the fact is if I go to um, any, whatever restaurant, if I'm going to a, like a, their servers, you know, when they're trying to rush out of there, you know, like get your food to your, you know, waiter and stuff. I always make eye contact. I always, you know, like say, thank you so much. You know, it doesn't matter what they're the cook. I always make sure to thank the cook when I'm gone, if they do a great job, because maybe they will give you a little extra next time and maybe won't put some pubic hairs in your food if you were complaining. But if you, you if you ever watch the movie waiting, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One of my favorites is the, the original Birdcage, La Caja Fall, like the, the French yes. film is fantastic. Oh, I've never seen the original one. Oh, it's fantastic. But the Birdcage, the remake of the English one with Robin Williams and um, Nathan Lane, there's one scene in the intro of the movie that made me fucking die laughing. It just it, it was almost like um, an afterthought. Robin Williams is going through the kitchen and as he's opening the door, there's a guy picking a steak up off the floor to put it on the tree. <laughs> <laughs> and he looks away. <laughs> he looks away, like shrugs his shoulders, like, oh my God, I, I wish I didn't see that. I fucking howled so much. The rest of the theater started laughing at me laughing. <laughs> just because it was just, it was unexpected. <laughs> or the scene in casino when uh Nikki Santoro's brother <laughs> spits in the steak sandwich. <laughs> Here. <laughs> so gross. Ugh.
I fucking laughed. <laughs> $50 for the entire school year for a kid to come there every afternoon to do their homework under supervision to be helped with their reading and language skills and their computer skills. So it's a really great program in that sense. And in the summer, they take care of 300 kids, and it only costs $35 per child. Yeah, yeah I for bet the I'd love to summer. go there in the summer. That sounds great. The South Beach Club? I, oh, yeah. yeah in yeah, the summer? Again, no it's not on the okay <laughs> just all piling on robin i love it good promotion yeah absolutely beach you're just being silly ralph because you're thinking it's canyon yeah. ranch or you know the shore club on the beach and it's not <laughs> i i gotta support robin on this i had no idea what the boys and girls club was till i moved to the suburbs and every great neighborhood. Yeah, he has, has a great neighborhood every great neighborhood pool? has their bad part is there a pool and no well, you should raise money. <laughs> there, there is, there is an hour. <laughs> yes, yes. You should stop making it about you. Put a pool in. Yeah. You well, find, like some do something. She could have just said if she just was like, "I'm quietly uh, re remodeling the Boys and Girls Club of South Beach, and I put in a pool and a yeah. jungle gym." They'd be ecstatic. Yeah, they would. I mean, just literally here we put 50,000, put this pool in and make sure there's like, you know, changing rooms and whatnot and a shower. Boom. Like just put in the plumbing. (laughs) No, we're going to have to have a wine night for that. And you have to look at some shitty art. Right. Because a plaque saying, you know, donated by Robin Quivers with a huge picture of her with her mouth open wouldn't be enough for her fucking fat ego. Right. Like you could just do this or you could do this thing where it's like. It's in government, too, where they're like, we're going to have a commission to study if this is a good idea. Right. Just do it. <laughs> Waste. We need a fucking commission. Yeah, we, need to know, a- we need to know. We need another climate summit. Right. With hors d'oeuvres. Off. <laughs> Let's have a meeting to discuss when the next meeting is going to be. <laughs> Things that are really great. But the South Beach facility is kind of meager. Yeah, but what Robert's saying is there's a lot of people who who work all day and have nothing to do with their kids. So I've actually seen it firsthand, and they really do a great job. Ralph, you still like Howard? <laughs> <laughs> He's involved. He Zooms with his kids. Exactly. He's a good father. Well, Robin's charity work here. No, I've actually just done a uh, 360 or 180. What would that be? <laughs> you don't even know. I'm, You're spinning like a top. I'm spinning like a top. I'm in full support of this now. I think that place should be beautiful. It should have a pool in it, and it should be a party. So you go, girl. <laughs> Thank you, Ralph. <laughs> okay, so that's the end of that clip. Now, guys, we're going into the Back from Guatemala wrap-up show segment, part two. And hope you get as much out of this as we have. How are you doing, Will? You're learning? Everyone learning. Congratulations on the trip to Guatemala. Okay. I want to ask you a question. Did you come across any uh, black dicks like Eddie the Produce guy? <laughs> I didn't see any. So right, I do don't you know about- what the color of the, the penises were. What do you think about Howard's new fascination with his look and all with the scarves, not the glasses? <laughs> <laughs> that's why i kept this one <laughs> this is not too far off from buoy someone recently posted um audio or they they, they posted audio on the facebook page of harry saying oh, no, it's not gary saying about howard's scarf look and he goes this is an out cue <laughs> yeah it was so great it was so great gary gave him so much shit about his scarf it was fucking awesome and right. everyone should but this was the time of transition from <laughs> wife beater dragon tat yeah. uh cargo pants that right. are 10 times the size of his you know anorexic legs right going into uh rita perlman poof uh <laughs> scarf leather all and, times of the year but he also started putting on those don buckwald fedoras that made him look like the uh, sax player in the muppet show oh, he li- <laughs> he looked like you know when you know stupid slutty girls decide to dress up as mafia people and they just put on you know they right. buy some shitty uh, fedora at claire's fedora. yeah <laughs> and they're like <laughs> plastic n- i'm a mafia duster. yeah i'm i have an <laughs> I'm a mafia person. That's right. what he looked like for an entire I'm, summer. I'm Victoria Gotti in the uh, red star black t-shirt. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> the granny oh. scarf. That was a bad mm. look. 
skater. Yeah. It's, it's fine. I think that every once in a while people need to update their look. Now, was I getting it correct? Are those transitional glasses? Those are not. He said the... these are not the only ones. So I, maybe he's trying out a few different right. shapes. Yeah, he said he's styles. got a few different pairs, yeah. I guess. I got the trying. impression that those weren't the ones that he was waiting for. No, I think these are some that he just thought were good transition glasses. Because <laughs> he's transitioning now in 2020. <laughs> it's I ironic mean... they're using this word so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bizarre to me when you go through the looks of Howard. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, through the years, he has no idea who he is. No. And, and, None. and we we have a good idea, but uh, when we do our little well, I won't I won't promo it just yet, but when we do Everyone, that that when yeah, we do I that know. discussion I'm going to talk about, uh maybe that's going to be one of the things the looks we're going to dis- discuss. Everyone knows like bad fashion throughout the times because yeah. if you look at it in hindsight, you look crazy, but yeah. it was of the times. Howard <laughs> looks cr- like, I don't even know, just fucking crazy. <laughs> he just is a new person every, you know, eight years or so. Yeah. And this is one of those times where it was like, what are you doing? You those look fu- like you, you look like you just got off, you know, the Backstreet Boys fucking <laughs> tour bus. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you come out. <laughs> I don't he's, know. He's got a Tom Baker Doctor Who scarf on, <laughs> <laughs> and I got I don't throw that Photoshop on. Sometimes I like to promo my own Photoshops in the video portion, and uh, I mean he he just it's like taking a piece of fashion from different eras and throwing them together and think, okay, now I'm eclectic. No, yeah. you're you're just retarded. You're <laughs> <laughs> like let's not dress it up. Pardon the pardon the expression. <laughs> And so he was checking him out. He's going to bring in a few more, I think. But over the last couple of months, he's talked about, he's admitted he's on sort of this online fashion kick. Mm-hmm. He's getting <laughs> scarves and hats and glasses. And has he gone through something like this before? Oh, he's been investigating new looks for a long, long time. I mean, when we first started working, <laughs> nobody had a look. You know, he used to come in in painter's pants and a plaid shirt or something. And one day he said, you know what? I really need a look. And we always talk about the. He actively said, I need a look. I need a look. I'm um I'm a middle aged man, father of three, and I need a look. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm on the radio. I'm on the radio. I need a look for Letterman. <laughs> you could you could go in there in pajamas. No one would give a fuck. You're on the radio at that point. I need a look. That's funny. It, it, by the way, so he needed a look and he decided on these. Right. <laughs> you, know what it's, you know what it reminds me of? You know how when like celebrities have kids and all of a sudden these stupid like in touch magazines are like, look at what I let I let my child pick out her own clothes. Look at what a right. fashionista Surrey Cruise is or something. Yeah, sure. So stupid. So dumb. Like I'm supposed to be impressed that she picked out her own clothes. Howard is like a little child that yeah. said. I'm wearing this to school today. And I'm like, right. no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> He'll put a straight jacket on backwards and claim it's haute couture. He's, Chris, he's crisscross. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the time with Mr. Ponte. <laughs> <laughs> that was- I missed the bus. <laughs> <laughs> um, jump, <laughs> jump. That, store. that was so not for him. Man. <laughs> boy, oh boy. It was a first attempt. Right. And then um, he met Ralph, and they've, you know, <laughs> to to... <laughs> the, rest, the rest is gay story yeah. for him. And he's worked with Dee Snyder's wife on different events, and and that also gave him a sense of what he wanted to look like. And, you know, as you go along, you're like, all right, maybe it's time for some updating. Maybe this is a little tired. Maybe. How hard is it, even back then, to fucking open up a GQ and say, I like this, I don't like this. This is how most men choose. They don't need a fucking stylist. Most men just look and see what they think they like, and they ask one or two people, what does this look like? And most people, if they're friends, will say, that looks like shit. No, 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 yes, yes. No salmon. Or, or <laughs> no they dope. don't care. Like, Or right. they don't care. Like, my dad has looked the same forever. Ooh, I mean, right. it's just they they just have, you know, their look or you have people who are kind of more fashion conscious and they go right. with the times, which is fine. There is not one person in my life that 
has ever said to me, a straight male, mm -hmm. I am go. I need. I need a look. <laughs> I need a look. Like multiple times, I need a new look and right. a completely different person. I mean, right. he was at one point going for like Tony Soprano tracksuits. Remember that? Yeah. Oh it God, like, that was the worst. <laughs> it was so embarrassing. I mean, how do you go from that to Johnny Depp? Fucking rings and necklaces <laughs> he looked like at that with the tracksuits he looked like you know it was the uh practice session for the intramural seniors home, like retirement home volleyball tournament or something like he, right. he was, like, and then yeah it, 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 it was it was sports day at sunny days retirement home <laughs> Like when Richie Wilson started talking about how awful the fashion were and they pointed oh. out in the <laughs> or TV video, <laughs> like you couldn't. The, like, OK, so you can't tell the, the emperor, you can't tell King Baby that he looks like a piece of shit and he looks like, you know, something that, you know, he picked out of the fucking trash. And uh, but so so again, the question that keeps coming up more recently, we had some new um, uh, new Facebookers in our group asking What's the connection with Ralph? Like, why would you keep someone that threw up into your linen and ruined them? Why would you keep someone who kept fucking up unless you were cornholing them? Well, of course, I somehow, you know, shoehorn in that question with every interview we've done. Sure. Bob Levy, right. Richie Wilson, Jackie. Every one of them genuinely the gives the answer they can't and don't know. They right. don't understand. Mm -hmm. They have no idea why, and they or, all or, can't, or they, and nobody can say anything. Or they know, but of course they can't say it. Right. Right, and that's what we're looking for. That that's painful pause when Sam does it. I keep going. Okay, let's see how long the pause it's, is before they <laughs> decide which avenue to turn down. It's so organic too. The reactions. Yeah. It's yeah. We have to we have to put the, the, those all together because it's Compilation. so funny. Yeah. Well, either way. Um, let's continue because the, I, I find this stuff fascinating. It's not 15 foundation related, but it's in within the context of the 15 foundation. Cause she's in wrap up. And show for she's a defending it. Yeah. Maybe I need something to perk me up and the glasses look good today. Do you think this is the best he's looked? Uh, I always like that. You know, like the pictures now <laughs> look a little ridiculous. You mean like when you, watch, when you look at old pictures of Bon Jovi? Yes. Yeah. When he had all the hair. You didn't realize how wild and crazy it was. I agree. I looked at some pictures of the old hair, like the hair when it was like, you know, when it was in. It was yeah. totally yeah. the look. And I go, I, I thought to myself, well, Howard's hair is not that much shorter. And I'm like, oh, my God, it was so big. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God, because it was a wig. What are you, serious? Are you yeah. kidding me? Because, uh, or he, even if he permed it, right, teased it, you know, I have, uh, I have family who had <laughs> hair like that, and it's like, you, you could never get it that high unless there was some sort of false piece. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, we 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 got the smoking gun with that uh, Brenner, uh, David Brenner, Henny Youngman clip from Good Day New York or whatever it was, where he goes, he literally goes, <laughs> "It's a wig, it's a weave," and he moves it. And someone yeah, said, and it well, if you push like, your hair, if you push your hair, it moves. Not collectively. Yeah, <laughs> it, should, right. it shouldn't be a fucking if, pith helmet. <laughs> if I take my hair and start scratching it, yeah, parts of it are going to move. But if right. I take my hair as a whole, it's not going to move right. like like you're shifting. A, I don't know, like, I don't know, a mouse or something <laughs> like a computer mouse. Like you're just moving it around the table and it's all going at once. It's not right. going to do that. Right. Exactly. So I don't know why people still hang on. How do you know he's wearing a wig? OK, yeah. OK. I have eyes. Know? Yeah, we have <laughs> we have eyes. We have visual evidence. <laughs> How do you know William Shatner's wearing a wig? <laughs> How do you know Burt Reynolds had a toupee? <laughs> just a hunch Ted Danson one of the worst <laughs> it was big but it was a good look for him his hair was really great now when Carol is in there Robin both she and Howard said you're the I you'd be the ideal I'd lesbian the, I, you know I feel like the get you know <laughs> <laughs> how the Christian uh, right has their get if we could convert you're the you know, one. Howard that would be the greatest thing that we could ever do or Paris Hilton or this one I must be the gay get Whoa! Pets? Is it because whoa, whoa, whoa! Yeah, I never heard that before or caught it during this. 
So Howard would be the gay get. So that um, means he has built his entire brand on not being that, which he's mm-hmm. trying to now say, because he has said in recent shows, mm-hmm. I want a gay audience because mm-hmm. they're so loyal. Well, right. your, your audience isn't loyal anymore because you're not funny and right. you're a rube. But that's interesting. Yep. Five That's very off, interesting. Yep. Uh, no, I think that for years, because I hang around in this male environment all the time and I appear to be comfortable to people, they have often thought that about me. So I guess they'd like it to be true. You know, it's sort of like, hey, you know, we've been suspecting this all along. It would be so great if, if it finally just became the truth. Well, there was also a long period of time where, when especially when I first met you, where you weren't dating uh-huh. and you weren't interested in dating. You just seemed okay. So, so our charity discussion has morphed into is Howard gay or is, is Robin gay? And there's people in our in our group that actually have firmly believed that she will go. She's either bi or outright lesbian. I I don't know, but there's lots of evidence to prove that she could go either way. I feel like she could go either way, but I also feel like maybe she that part of her is closeted off and mm. not willing like asexual mm-hmm. in that regard. Yeah. And I feel like she tried male relationships unsuccessfully, obviously, but ne- maybe she went, tried to go down that route or too scared to open herself up to that. I'm not yeah. sure about Robin. Yeah, I'm it's... very sure about Howard, but oh, not. Yeah. Sure about Robin. <laughs> yeah. She's uh, up in the air to be, you know, in your own thing. So, it, it seemed like a long time to a lot of people. <laughs> I mean, I remember I, we talked to you about it on the air once, but we asked, like, how long has it been since you had sex? And it was a long time, yeah, which yeah. women seem to be able to do no problem. <laughs> well, you know, I had a lot Not of true. going on for me at We that didn't know that. We just, no, I was, <laughs> that was, but I just didn't want to impose that on anyone else. We, had, we all thought not getting laid was your issue. <laughs> She's just if people couldn't guys couldn't fucking put up with her. Let's be honest. I mean, you, the staff can't put up with her. Interns were afraid of her. Limo drivers would call in sick so they couldn't have to pick her up. What do you think was the problem? Personality also, first, first and foremost. Right. And they're all such wretched people yeah. that I feel like their opinion. So when Gary says, oh, I feel like women, you know, they could hold out longer and they could how, of course, for you. Yeah. Or, for, or for any of you, you're nobody. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, Big Tank, Tank was looking at the vibrator, going, "I wish I married that." Nobody knows. Nobody has. Nobody should have an opinion on this. What women can or cannot hold out on for sex? These people, especially. Yeah, this this troll contingent. <laughs> no. Did, did you guys know that Howard envied Al Bernstein? That whole that thing? was a surprise today. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought he was going to say a different it. name. I thought, I thought, it was, what was that guy's name that used to be on ninety seven? That used to do the mini Bond Bell, mini Baby Bell. Come oh on, you know, God, I, yeah. What was his name? Because uh, Howard always said he admired that guy. That that guy had such a great voice. He did commercial work, but I never heard. I never heard Al, Al Bernstein was brand new. Yeah, yeah. That was that was new to all of us. Tom in Arizona, you're on the. Right- <laughs> which makes it sound like bullshit, because unless you've heard the story uh, way back when, and well, we all know the stories change and, and they, we're going to go into that when we get into the Colford thing, guys, his influences and people that, conf- you know, commented on his rise <clears throat> and uh, his, pro- his rise to prominence or local prominence in New York about how, you know, we all have influences, but we're willing to admit it. He's the one that's saying everybody copied off me when he's the one that copied and he wasn't, he wasn't able to, because uh, of his narcissism, say this guy influenced me, this guy influenced me. Right. And that's why all the obituary, you know, legacy nonsense that he says, it ends up always being about him and nothing to do honoring the person. Absolutely nothing to do with Rest the in person's peace, life. I, Rest in I peace, also, what do you leave behind in the will? He, le- he left behind hitting on Beth. Ooh, so yeah. hot. Yeah. Um, I also think, too, when they're talking about, you know, sex and their relationships, if you've ever seen the wedding singer, there's this scene where he's, he's so up, he's, you know, rejected by yeah. his first fiance. He's devastated. And they're yeah. like, maybe you should go back to work. And he's like, love stinks. And he's like, and every everyone at this table knows, look at sideburns over there. And it's like this yeah. ugly <laughs> table of, you know, miscreants. It's just yeah. fucking 
<laughs> one's got a mustache, one has sideburns. It's one's so obese and terrible. That's yeah. the Stern show. Of course, yeah. they don't know what anything is. <laughs> right. I can hold out. <laughs> well, you're going to have to. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Hey, 11th time on the air, everybody. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hey, as far as Robin being a lesbian, uh, I think JD's got a better chance of having a threesome with Ashley Dupree's mom and her. I just don't see that happening with Robin. Womp womp. But, uh, congratulations, Robin, on your Guatemala thing. Thank God for people like you. <laughs> <laughs> that was the guy that had put, he was in the previous wrap up show where he, so he managed to get in twice. Though, gotta love the wrap up show when you can get in multiple times. Jesus Christ, when did that happen? He recovered, like he failed on the first dig, yeah. but that one was good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Th thank you, Tom. I love your, it. I the last. Did you hear the rapper? <laughs> Shoo you off. Uh, Shooing him off. It, he called yeah. in yesterday. It was his 10th time. Oh, he and said, he said I was congratulating <laughs> myself. Yeah, he said, he <laughs> goes, he goes, uh, thank God for people like that. <laughs> and I was talking about me. Yes. Is what he said. Uh, I did not. Oh, no, surprise. Uh, yeah. <laughs> She was fine with that, too, because it was still about her. Well, let's talk more about what you're doing on, on Thursday. Give out the info and how people can get involved. It's uh, Thursday, Plug the alert. 25th of March, down in uh, South Beach at STK Miami, which is at the Gansevoort Hotel. And it's... <laughs> <laughs> you can donate well, between uh, mouthfuls of pate and chicken liver pate and fucking champagne cocktails. <laughs> You can send me uh, some P. Diddy vodka. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Crystal Skull vodka uh, from Dan Aykroyd. Free event. Oh, really? Yeah. All you have to do is show up. I just love to say hi to everybody. There are ways to participate and donate when you're there. But please stop by and say hello. Is it's this from 7 to 10. Is this event similar to the one you had in, in the city? Yeah. It's just to introduce the fact that, the you know, the 15 Foundation is... Uh, <laughs> Another introduction? <laughs> So this fucking bitch went all the way to Guatemala for a, for a fact-finding mission of nothing, and she's having a fucking a south oh. a South Beach intro party. Oh, there's this one. There's this one putana. I'm sorry to speak ill of the dead, but I hated her in life, and I didn't think much of her in death, and I, I don't wish her death on anybody. But she, they, she would do the vagina monologues every so often, and it was just awful. It was just really horrendously bad. But then the well, there's one year where they had like an announce, like we're gonna have a party to announce how much we raised. <laughs> I'm not joking. <laughs> that was the whole premise. And I took I called I talk shit about it all the time. And I said, you know what? A real charity, you no one finds out you actually did it. Real charity, you don't wave the flags, you don't fucking have a party to, you know, announce what you're doing. You just go and do it. Or and uh, and then if, and you, she, do, she, if you do anyway. want to make it on TV, Fillmore, right, right? Right. You have the right. Jerry Lee Lewis thing where you basically stand till you die. Jerry Lee Lewis? Yeah, no, the killer. Lewis. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Whoops. Dane, <Jane>. Dane. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's, that's all right. <laughs> that would be a bad charity. But you would have that sort of thing where it was all day long. It looked exhausting. You oh, were yeah. working your ass off to get donations in real time and you could see a ticker. Oh, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, that's if you're going to do publicly something like, you know, where you're the center of attention, do something like that. Right. Yeah. Do that. Do a telethon. Robin. Yeah. yeah. And he and, and make no mistake, Jerry, he was he was a bit of a cocksucker to a lot of people. But oh, God, and he was I and I found out him. from I found out from Dave Thomas's interview on the Gilbert show that the Gilbert podcast that Jerry was paid a million dollars to appear at the the to do the telethon every time. Shut up. Yes. And at a time when his career was really flagging and he wasn't getting, you know, video assist patent money anymore because it was all, you know, it was all the technology was changing and stuff. And certainly he wasn't making movies. So financially, people think he was really well off, but no, he wasn't doing so well near the end. And he kind of needed that to prop himself up. Well, show business was very, you know, sharkish and not as savvy as right. it was. I mean, we we know that from listening and reading the Carson history and stuff. Oh, yeah. And music industry and whatever, but sure. Jerry, 
that, that telethon, I remember as a kid, my grandma would watch it and my dad and I would be like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, we had the local one and we had his, and I would always want to see the national one because you know, the, 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 the Jerry Lewis one, because it was always more funny to watch him be oh. <laughs> a racist brick. And can well, call people Nazis and fags. I go, he's so mean. He's yeah. so mean, like so aggressive. But the phone calls and the celebrities. And then at the end, I would always, you know, the walk well, alone. Well, you'll never walk alone. <laughs> Liverpool <laughs> FC. So he, yeah. And the the funny part was um, the, uh, <laughs> again, I'm going to hate to, every, it's like a, it's like a, it's like you didn't ask for it, guys. You're getting it anyway. Martin Short did <laughs> on SCTV. Jerry Lewis yes. live at the Champs Elysees. <laughs> Oh my god. And at one point what? at one point he's screaming at the piano player. He goes, because he's singing You'll Never Walk Alone, and all of a sudden he misses the cue and he goes, Look, when I do the cry, you do the cue. Cry, cue. You like your job, do it. <laughs> I respect that more than Robin's charity. Yeah, Introduction. Exactly. Let's try to let's try to wrap this one up up and running and off the ground and, if, and go to 15 foundation dot org for more information. And it is a benefit for the Boys and Girls Club of South Beach. Wait a second. I just heard Ralph snickering. <laughs> <laughs> let's take one more call. Nick and Ray Tahoe, you got the last call on the wrap up show. Thanks, John. Robin, what was the scariest moment in Guatemala that you did not like at all? There were no moments that I didn't like at all there. The only time, you know, apparently Guatemala City. Okay, and we're going to guys just bear with us here is the place where all the violence occurs and they've got a lot of gang problems and murders and all of that stuff and um, robbery and tourist uh, issues. You felt safe, though. You felt safe when you were there. We never you were spent with. we never spent much time at all in Guatemala City. We were there like two nights. We just <laughs> went into the city as a uh, transition to some other place. So we never spent any time on the streets of Guatemala City. The only issue we ever had was one day we were going to guatemala city late in the afternoon and so it's about robin's safety and her her being comfortable make sure she's okay in these <laughs> unsafe territories and by the way sounds like chicago <laughs> just a little bit just a tad and the guide said we need to be there before dark and it sounded like, oh, they have highwaymen here who hijack you on the road. And, uh, yeah, that was his only issue. He said there's lots of uh, possibilities of crime if you're on the road after dark. What was it like getting the calls from Steve Langford for some updates? Well, again, they were complete surprises because I didn't know that Steve knew where I was. But he somehow found the company that created the trip and put together. <laughs> good, good old Mud oh. Langford. He somehow found it. Oh, my God, Fillmore. So he, Steve Langford knew the itinerary for her trip. Sure. And this thoughtless wonder just has no idea. Mm -hmm. Just floating, floating yep. around, flitting around. That's providing right. Providing zero facts. And Steve Langford was like, here, at this time, you're supposed to be here. What is this like? I have no idea. Yep. She flits. She floats. That's it. She's a passenger sinks. through life, as always. She sinks. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking anchor. I just get this image of Robin, like, with her little camera and that deep voice going, and now I'm filming a gang rape in the, uh, in the, in the, in the Chinese quarter. Um, where is my Every water bottle? <laughs> <laughs> everyone's, everyone's starving, including the cows. But I... Have to get to a UN meeting. Oh, I missed it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> We're recording into an obvious Nazi machine. <laughs> it's not too far know, from Judy. This is ridiculous. It's Manchurian. Ridiculous. I don't know why I'm doing this. <laughs> Guys, we're going to wrap it up. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to have one of these. Well, like we said, it's been a couple months for this one uh, and a couple months in coming, but we're going to try to we're getting near the end, actually. So maybe two more episodes and this saga will be complete, more or less. And oh, um, it's so we, long. It's like the Guinness Bible. <laughs> <laughs> we love it. <laughs> we love it. And we hope you guys appreciate it, too. And uh, any words you want to send out there, Sam, before we wrap this up? 
I just want to say thank you to all of our fans. You guys are so supportive, sweet, loving, and make me laugh. <laughs> you are. Comic, you are. You? <laughs> they were. They are. They're such good people. Well, most of you are. They seem to be. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. We love you. Take care. Oh, just real quick. I was also calling because uh, I just wanted to Bye. say my two <laughs> on the See you later. Of June. Thanks, Eric. Back back. <laughs> back back. All right, buddy. Back back. Eric, what, I couldn't hear you. What did you say? I said the tour that I'm Take care, man. Back back. <laughs> Don't ever call back. <laughs>